Good morning and welcome. Every year on the year, for almost a decade now, Apple's September event has meant fresh new iPhones, except of course for last year, which thanks to 2020 was all Apple Watch and iPad. So what does 2020 Junior, I mean 2021, have in store for us, literally? Well, it's actually looking like a return to form with 120 Hertz iPhone 13, redesigned Apple Watch Series 7, refreshed iPad 9, redesigned AirPods 3, and maybe, just maybe, a redesigned iPad mini and some M1X Max. Let me explain. Rumor has it Apple's just gonna keep on iterating the current entry-level iPad with another screen bump, this time to 10.5 inches, which started on the iPad Pro 2, then moved to the iPad Air 3 when the Pro 3 got its big redesign and is now moving to the iPad Nothing 9 following the Air 4's big redesign last year. And never say never about laminated displays, but that's really all I'm expecting at this price point or less. No A13, no full screen, no pencil 2, no magic keyboard that costs almost as much as the machine itself. No power button touch ID either. Nothing that takes away from the more expensive, more premium mid-range iPads like the current Air or the widely expected new Mini, which is supposed to be getting just exactly that kind of big redesign. A very similar one to last year's big iPad Air redesign, pretty much making it an iPad Mini Air or iPad Air Mini, both with deleted home button, Thanos snapped bezels, power button mounted touch ID, and a rainbow of colors, but with the mid-range price point between the nothing and the air to go with it. I've got a full video up for you on all the new iPad mini rumors and I'll link to it right below the like button. But I also have some questions like, will it require a new smaller Apple Pencil too? Could Apple possibly make a magic keyboard tiny enough to fit it? And will it actually be announced at the September event or will it be part of the more traditional for iPad October event instead? Apple Watch Series 7 is reportedly getting a new design, a new retro future chic design as well, something to bring it more fully in line with the current flatter, more squared off iPad and iPhone designs. There are also rumors of better swim tracking, but other health features like body temperature, blood sugar, and blood pressure might still be a year or several away. And the addition materials of ceramic and titanium might simply be going away with the focus shifting instead to the aluminum models, but with an iPhone-like, even Mac-like set of brand new Apple chromatic colors. Full video already up on that for you as well. So will Apple finally retire the Series 3, update the Apple Watch SE? And my guess is yes to the Series 3 going away, just so Apple doesn't have to keep supporting three form factors and circa 2016 tech with the 2022 watchOS update. And with the Series 7 getting a new design, That'll free up the current SE uh, so that rather than updating it, they can price drop it to cover that entry level instead. That would just be way, way more in line with how the iPhone SE has historically been positioned. For the iPhone 13 or iPhone 12S or whatever Apple calls this year's new models, we're looking at the same mini, regular, pro, and pro max, same sizes and similar price points as well, but with an A15 or basically M2 Junior chipset. More efficient X60 5G modems bigger and better camera systems, including portrait mode video and smaller notches just all around. And for the pro models, the long awaited ProMotion or variable refresh rate from a peak of 120 Hertz for scrolling and gaming to 48 Hertz for Hollywood movies, all the way down to one Hertz for always on lock screen displays. And while it's supposed to be the same or similar LTPO OLED panels, as the Galaxy S21, the combination of Apple's custom drivers, display engineering, and iOS pipelines and color management and performance, it could all just melt eyeballs in hitherto unimaginable ways. And yes, I did absolutely just say hitherto. Full video on all that, you know it, link below the like button. AirPods 3 are supposed to be much more like AirPods Pro, at least in terms of the design, if not anything like the active noise cancellation or transparency. But the biggest questions I still have is whether that inductive charging will be included by default now, whether there'll be a price drop and lower cost Apple rather than just Beats truly wireless headphones, and whether or not they'll have the traditional all on in ear design that some love, others hate, or the silicon tip options from the AirPods Pro that others love and some hate. But the elephant sized wild card in the room is the M1X MacBooks Pro, 
which everyone and their YouTuber expected back in WWDC in June, but which LED displays reportedly delayed until this fall. With new, flatter, squared off iPad Pro and M1 iMac style designs, the return of MagSafe power, HDMI and SD card ports, a bezel snapped 14 inch model to match the previously snapped 16 inch model, and the death of the touch bar, RIP. Also, yes, M1X, which should be a more massively multi core and memory extended pro ready version of the M1, not M2 which should be the next generation ultra low power M1 replacement for the next consumer MacBook Air sometime next year. But will Apple really have the new M1X Max ready for the September iPhone event, or will it take until the more traditional October Mac event to push them all out, or will we be waiting until November again, like we were for the first M1 Max, or yes, will they be spread out across the fall? I've got videos up on all of that, and you can watch them all ad-free, sponsor-free, often extended versions, including this video, even originals on Nebula. Originals like my iPhone Impact video, where some of the best creators in the business join me to talk about that very first iPhone keynote and what it meant to them and to their careers. Nebula also hosts videos from MKBHD, iPhoneDo, Georgia Dow, Jordan Harrod, Low Spec Gamer, Jenny Ma, Ali Abdal, Tech Alter, and so many more, all ad free, sponsor free, and bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie, or click the link below. And right now, because you watch this channel, you can get Curiosity Stream for 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, less than the price of an airport sandwich for a whole entire year. And that includes their thousands of amazing documentaries and series like Vikings, which is all about, yeah, Vikings. And you'll be supporting educational creators directly for over 26% off CuriosityStream, less than $15 a year, and Nebula bundled in for free. Just click on the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash Rene Ritchie. Clicking on that link really helps out this channel. And so does hitting the playlist above for even more on all of Apple's upcoming fall products so you can choose what you wanna buy and what you wanna skip. Just hit it up and I'll see you in the next video.